Hello and welcome to Professor Pincushion. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can take your measurements. Accurate measurements are one of the most important parts of sewing for getting well-fitted clothes. Never assume that your ready-to-wear clothing size is the same as pattern sizes because it's not. Pattern companies have their own system of sizing. What you're going to need is you're going to need a flexible tape measure. You're going to need a measurement chart like this one, which you can get at the back of the pattern lookbook. You can get it on their website, or you can also get it on the pattern envelope. This one has it on the flap, or sometimes it's just on the back. You're also going to need a friend to help you. You shouldn't be taking the measurements yourself because you need to stand nice and tall and no bending over. We're gonna be going over measurements for men, women, and children, but let's start with women first. When taking your measurements, make sure that you're not wearing any bulky clothes. We don't wanna add any unnecessary inches. So for women, you're going to be taking the measurement of the circumference of your body of three major areas. This is going to be your bust line, so it's gonna be the fullest part of your bust line, the waistline, and this is your natural waistline. So if you were to bend the top portion of your body, it's gonna be where you get a crease in your side and it should be just right above your belly button. And the last area is going to be the hip line. So this is going to be the fullest part of the hip area. The last measurement you're gonna get is from the back. So you can see I turned my mannequin around and you're gonna start at the base of the neckline, take your tape measure and measure down to your waistline. So that's why I like to use either ribbon or string or elastic to tie around the major points so that way I'm always staying consistent on where I'm measuring from. So this is my waistline, the same place where I'm taking their circumference. Most measurement charts give you the option of either measuring in inches or centimeters. I normally always do it in inches. When you're taking the circumference of something, you're gonna go around the whole body. So this is a side view of my mannequin and we're gonna do an example of the bust line. So I'm going around the whole thing, the back, front, and sides. And you can see I have the end of my tape measure here, starting at one, and then I'm bringing the other side so I can get an accurate measurement of what this is. So it's about, if I move my tape measure, it's meeting at about 34 inches. Now I just wanna make sure that my tape measure is even all the way around the body. So it's going straight across the back, the side, and the front. That's why I also have my ribbon because then it gives me a guideline to look at to make sure that I'm doing it even. And you want it to pull it tight, but still be able to fit a couple of fingers underneath. We don't want it too tight. And no holding your breath. We don't need any cheating because we want your clothes to feel comfortable. Once you have all your measurements, you can then try to figure out what pattern size you're going to be. And you can see the pattern sizes in this chart are listed right here on the side. And I just again want to point out that your retail sizing is not going to match your pattern sizes. So if for example, you normally always purchase a size four when you go to stores, chances are your pattern size may be a size 10. It's always larger, so there's no reason to worry. That is perfectly normal. So you can see up here at the top, we have our measurements. You have bust, waist, hip, and then the back waist length, which is from the back of the neck down to the natural waistline. And it's in inches, and it's also in centimeters. And all you're trying to do is take your measurements, line them up in a row, and then that row is going to be your size. Now I'm just using the misses as an example here. So these are sizes four through 26. And if I go down here, there's also women's and these sizes are larger and these are the sizes right here, but it's the same sort of setup. So I'm just using this one as an example. Now, sometimes what happens is we can't always fit neatly in a box and you won't be able to decide on a size perfectly. They have this little diagram down here at the bottom and what they're telling you is for jackets and shirts and tops and vests, they say it's better to fit according to your bust line. So what this means is if you're making, let's say a shirt, you really wanna make sure that you find the size for the bust line. Let me just move this down so we can see that again. So bust is number one. So maybe my bust line is a 36, so I'm gonna go ahead and do a size 14. That way we can make sure that no, not only the bust line fits, but also the shoulders and the arms and everything else is gonna fit as well. But maybe 
my waistline is a 29. So it's a little bit bigger than what they say that your waistline should be for a size 14. There are ways to alter your patterns in order to get them to fit for you without doing a huge thing after the garment is already made. You can do it beforehand. We strongly recommend that you watch our tutorials on increasing or decreasing your waistline. And we also have one for hip and bust line. So you can still do the size 14, but then alter the pattern so you can increase the waistline on your pattern piece. It's the same thing with the bottom. So they're saying here, if you're doing pants, shorts, or a skirt, it's more important that you fit your hip line. And then if you need to make adjustments to the waistline, you can do that as well. You can also find a measurement chart usually on the pattern envelope. This one's located on the top flap. And I just want to point out that not all patterns carry all sizes. This one right here only show sizes six through 22 because that's all the sizes that this particular pattern is carried in. If you're curious if a pattern comes in your size, you can always find this information on the product page in the pattern company's lookbook. And you can see that in this box right here where it says size. This one is for European size and French sizes. So you just look at the top one and you can see it comes in sizes eight through 16 and 18W through 24W. These parentheses mean that this is an envelope. So one envelope is gonna carry these sizes eight through 16 and another envelope is going to be sizes 18W through 24W. Let's go ahead and go over the men's measurements. Now with men, it's a little bit similar to the women in that you're taking some of the same measurements. So the first one, instead of bust line, you're going to be taking the chest measurement. So this is a circumference around the widest part of your chest and this is gonna be right underneath your armpit area. Then you're gonna do the waistline and the hip line. The ones that are new for men is going to be a circumference of the neck measurement and then you're gonna be doing the sleeve measurement, which is this one right here. So we're gonna show you how to do those two measurements in a minute. Let's take a look at this chart. So it has the same sort of layout. You have it in inches and you have it in centimeters. And you'll see we have chest, waist, hip, shirt sleeve, and the neck measurement or neck band. The sizes are here to the left. And again, you're trying to line up your measurements in a row, and then that's gonna be your size. But they have a little cheat sheet down here. So they're saying if you're doing a jacket or a vest, you should use your chest measurement to get your size. If it's a shirt, they're saying you should use the neck measurement. And then for pants or shorts, you should focus on the waist measurement. So if, for example, if I'm doing a vest for a man, I would find a, his chest measurement, let's say it's 40, and then use size 40 for my pattern. And don't forget, if you pick up a men's style pattern, you can also look at the measurement chart on the pattern as well. To take the men's neck measurement, what you're gonna do is you're gonna have the base of the neck and you can feel the collarbone and you're gonna go about a couple of inches above that, right about over the Adam's apple. Since it's a circumference measurement, you're gonna go around the whole thing. I have the front of my tape measure and I'm gonna bring it to meet with the other side of the measurement. So let me just turn this around just a little bit. So it's gonna be about 14 inches. Again, you'd wanna make sure it's not too tight. You can at least fit a finger under there because you definitely don't wanna choke the person you're taking the measurement of. To take the sleeve measurement, I usually have the person that I'm taking the measurement of bend their arm so it's almost at a 90 degree angle and they can just rest their hand comfortably on their waist. You're actually gonna start on the back of the base of the neck. So we're looking at the back side here and you're gonna start in the middle of the neck. So about where you can feel the spine. Let me grab my tape measure here. So this is where I'm going to start. You're gonna come across the shoulder, over the elbow, and then about where you want the sleeve to end. So in this case, I'm just gonna stop a little bit past the wrist. Let's go ahead and look at children's measurements. So the smaller the child, the less measurements you have to take. Let's take our first example here, which is for the infant. 
And you can see they're just taking in measurements of the height or the length and then also the weight of the child. And you can see the size is over here. But once we get over to toddlers, now we're starting to add to that. So you still have the height, but now you're adding the waist and the chest. We have our sizes right here. Once you get to children and girls and boys, you're adding even more to it. And this time they're going to be the same for both children and then for girls and boys. I'm just going to go ahead and use this one as the example. So you have the chest. So this is going to be the area underneath the armpit. You're going to have waist, hip, and to this, we're going to also add the back waist length. So this is at the base of the neck to the waist. And then you have your sizes listed right here in the chart. So once you know your correct pattern size, then you can go ahead, pick out your patterns and start sewing. Make sure to check out our other videos and visit ProfessorPincushion.com to view our complete library with well over 150 sewing video tutorials. New tutorials are released regularly, so make sure to subscribe to be notified of the next release. Thanks for watching.